left, what is it, six? So six. Uh, Jeremy had intended to be in the meeting remotely, but said that he can't make it. Uh, the same with Andy Gilbert, so I guess we'll just have to go with those of us in the room. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? There's going to be some changes because there's a number of things that um, Jeremy was supposed to report on, and without him here, <clears throat> he didn't give me any information, so I'm going to skip over those. But is there anything else? Josh oh. is at their meeting. Ah, right. Okay, he might come in. Uh, under the grants item, I can describe the RFP that the state just issued. Ah, okay. Okay, so I'll take that as no uh, changes. Is there any public comment? Is there any public? <laughs> See? Seeing as we don't have the ladder, and we're at the treasurer's room. All right. <laughs> so we are. Um, oh, let's see. I forgot to add that. Check my camera. Um, we did receive uh, a, well, our regular monthly donation, and we got another donation. Um, so we are up to $7,192.82. But <clears throat> we do have funds that have been committed to us in terms of grants. So we have the 500 from um, Cabot, and then we have the 12.5 or whatever we can match from the Think, Think Vermont, Vermont, and then the 25 or I think, again, whatever we can match from USDA. And I did um, get the paperwork on that. OK, so the USDA grant is final. It's been awarded. Yes. No. no. One said yes, one said no. We need more paperwork. Oh, OK. Do you, is, OK, so the, I got this that said we could talk about it in public. Oh, good. Oh, good. No, they so I figured the, that's a good sign. We awarded the, the grant, but they're not going to finalize it till we get all the revisions and the subtractions. And right, the, so it hasn't okay. been obligated yet. Correct. Okay. So September 1st is their goal. Okay. So um, and that's what amount? 25000 Um And then another note that I had on that is that... Um, I uh, started a new job a week ago, and the reason that that's relevant is that I now work for USDA Rural Development. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I was mildly concerned, even though I don't have a voting um, role, that there was going to be a potential conflict of interest since I re prepare financial reports and that kind of stuff. Um, but they ran that up the chain and said that it's fine. Um, it would probably be best if somebody else signs off on the said reports, um, but that they don't have a problem with me being treasurer okay. or continuing to be treasurer. So, but just so that's out there. And I work in a different division than um, this is from the business to business programs, and I'm working in community programs. So, didn't we already have some kind of process in place to have a sign off by? Finance committee? Yeah, well, Rama is um, is a, the other signatory on the oh. checking account. Okay. Um, and we did have that process for, um, I think, like invoices and things like that. I don't know that we had it for, right. like, reporting that and things, right. but yeah. Yeah. Um, right. we can fix that. Okay. I think that's so probably that's an item for the next agenda. We'll put that on and then. Um, sure. Yeah, to come up, maybe come up with yeah. some sort of process for that. Okay. Any other questions for Becca? Um, Josh is not here and hasn't come in, but might yet. Um, well, we've heard status of grants. We've heard on the rural development one. Did you have something else? I have more, uh, yeah, the role of it, and I'm sorry I'm not prepared for this. One of the pieces of paper we have to submit by September 1st is a signed sheet affirming something or other by every member of the board. So I'll send that out to everybody pre-populated, but you'll have to sign it and mail it back to them. Um, like actual paper? Yes. What yeah, it's, a kind of, it's you know, saying that you're, you're, you're good and holy. Oh. 
So one delegate from each town has to sign it. Uh, so that, I mean, this thing is full of paperwork. <laughs> Um, the other thing is that with the, there's about seven documents that have to be submitted to them on handicap accessibility and posting notices and, and uh, we're all good and faithful and all that. Um, but uh, what we fundamentally have to do is change the $30,000 application to a $25,000 application and redo the forms that say that, including the standard form of federal grants. Um, so. It's pretty close to done. Jerry, Jerry and I self have been working on that and should have it finished. And I'm sorry I didn't bring those forms to everybody here tonight, <coughs> although we would have been missing some. Um, but that's the, um, the USDA grant. Um, the Department of Public Service has issued its RFP for planning and feasibility studies. I think I sent out a link to everybody with the uh, the timeline. Did everybody see yeah. that? Yeah. Yes. I sent it out by email. Yes. Oh. Well, maybe I only sent it to the business development committee. Yeah, it looks like that. Too. Sorry. Anyway. All right. So the um, they issued it on August sixth. They have you have to, and we need a motion on this tonight. A notice of intent to apply by s September fifth. So I want to make. I have to finish reading all this. I'll ask for a motion on this. September 19th, we have to submit all our questions. And they're only going to answer questions to those people who have signed a letter of intent, which is interesting. And then on October 25th, proposals are due from all applicants by 4.30 p.m. And November 8th, they're planning to award the, the grants. What they've done is they've, they're going to offer three rounds of $60,000 each to everything from communication union districts to nonprofits to even co-ops and things like that. Um, the, they're breaking the $60,000 into two pots. The, the planning feasibility piece is the first 30,000. The second 30,000 is the business plan. What they wanna do is not spend any money on something that doesn't look feasible from their first round of activity. Um, and the way it was portrayed to me by the guy at the Public Service Department is the, the completion of the business plan portion of the grant would entitle the entity to use that document to get the VITA loan money, which I thought was pretty interesting <laughs> in terms of, well, I don't know what VITA's due diligence is requiring, but that's what Clay Purvis told me was that their intent was that the business plan piece of the, of the grant would enable the entity to then take that document to VITA. So that makes that pretty interesting. Um, uh, the uh, money, of, this is a great thing about the grants. The USDA, as you draw down, you, you submit for reimbursement as you spend. The state of Vermont's grant is you get 50% of the money if, after you've done the work and when you've, they've approved the plan, they'll give you the other half. So I don't know how consultants actually can deal with that, or we, we are going to deal with consultants, because it's a pretty, being a consultant, it stinks. I uh, see 10% hold back typically in state of Vermont projects, yeah. but not not 50%. So there's some issues that we're gonna ask, and term, oh, I'm gonna right. uh, itemize in questions that I and wanna put forward. That's actually the most liberal the department's been in a while. Is that it right? was 100% hold back up till now. So you have they they describe I spoke to Clay also. Um, is it okay if I answer? Yeah. Okay. Um, he said that um, well now I'm trying to remember it. Essentially you're applying for the whole thing, the whole Correct. sixty thousand. But they're they're not gonna let you continue unless you show it's feasible. Correct. And at the end of the feasibility stage, they will pay for that study. And then they will not give you the second half till the end of the business model as well. I think you just said it that way, but I'm on yeah. make sure. Yeah, that's what I heard. So anyway, it's sort of an interesting way. So if that's the way they've already done business. It's a pretty tough way to do business. That that might have cash flow implications yeah, for us then. Yeah, definitely. Oh, we get a consultant who's willing to hold on. You know, right. Yeah. Wait so till is the that end. just one grant for sixty thousand dollars, and Correct. one entity's going to get that? No, they're going to get out three. So there's three sixty thousand dollar grants. Okay. 
And I can assume, you know, it's going to be pretty competitive because I know that Representative Sebelius is going to probably get one down in southern Vermont <laughs> since, she, since she drafted the bill, huh? That's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's okay. We'll that's send okay. her a link. <laughs> um, so that's sort of the uh, status and grants for me. Okay. Somebody else has got some interest. So I, I had a, oh, sorry. I just had a real quick question. That $25,000 USDA grant, are we able to use that as part of our matching funds for the state cool. grant? Correct. Um, the matching for the USDA grant is the 12.5 from the state of Vermont, the Think Vermont Innovation Grant. Right. And then the remaining match is that we said we'd do in this grant is the 12.5 that CD Fiber is putting forward from so its cash. So we, we still have to come up with 12.5. Correct, and we've got we've got seven seventy one. So we are. It's um, it's time. It's time to shake trees. It's time to shake trees, and it wasn't when time I get before, it's time now. Um, I'll get to I, I'll talk about that a little bit from the right. business that, development that committee. All, yeah. Yeah. Has there been a request to the Think Vermont people as to whether um, additional funds may be available for this project? I don't think anybody's even inquired. I would inquire. There's, there's additional funds. Okay. Then, I, I we didn't hear that from you. But I don't know. But I don't know if they're available for this project. Okay. Cool. They still need to be matched. Typically. So that's that's one of our big bugaboos. So so the RFP had mentioned that they're going to favor applications that are providing matching funds, uh, not necessarily one to one, but whatever matching. Um, and so we do as. CD, we have an advantage to bring those other funds in to the as project. Yeah. I mean, we have a disadvantage in the sense that our timing for this project and the work we were working on was sort of a little out of sync in terms of our RFP or you know using the USDA, yeah. you know, putting something out in anticipation of what. Why do we put out a, a fairly decent RFP that's pretty comprehensive and pick a consultant who can say, well, we have this much money, <laughs> or we don't say how much money we have. We just look and see what we get in for, for bids on doing all the work. It's sort of an interesting little bit of a catch-22. I, I had a question, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm Jeremy, the alternate from Plainfield. And uh, the question that I had was, um, I've been doing a little bit of shaking of trees, and one person that I spoke with is a designer who offered um, to donate design time. I guess he's a web developer. I mean, it looks, uh, looks like good stuff to me. I don't really know much about it, to be honest. Um, but is that something that we can use as matching for either of these grants? I know in the USDA grant, they allow in-kind matches. And that we use that in our grant application. Okay. And I, haven't, I, don't, I don't know what to think for more. The question would be, would design work be relevant to match for a I mean, study. Well, in terms of a business plan, this certainly would be. You need to have a website. You can't have a business without a website. Certainly so, not an internet maybe. business. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, he also apparently does marketing as well. So, and I, it might be something, one thought that I had was maybe saying, well, if we can get a contract from him, like say, he'll donate X number of hours to the project as you know on an as needed basis or something like that I don't it, it's something that popped into my head yeah. as soon as he offered it I was like well maybe we can get that in there as an in-kind donation yeah. um, to help out with that 75 or at a minimum we should track it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. so who should I the let bit. know well, I guess it's a business development committee you know, okay. program, so, although we're looking for some other help on the financial side of things. But. <laughs> Jonathan, do you have any best practices on tracking in-kind donations? <laughs> I mean, you track it, yeah, absolutely. There's lots of different ways. There's templates that you can use. Mm -hmm. um, sure. I mean, I can, I would be happy to provide some of my own templates that I use for sure. tracking okay. this. So, I mean, it would be ideal to have you know, a database where you can track, you know, commitments, acknowledgements, like something like Razor's Edge or a Little Green Light. Okay. Um, I, I'm very familiar with Razor's Edge, but I mean, those 
in that sort of thing, that sort of system costs money. And razor's edge can be clunky, but um, I did just provide some analysis of databases for smaller uh, nonprofits for tracking this sort of thing, like not just in kind donations, but all donations and major donors, that sort of thing. Um, and my my conclusion was that Little Green Light is very agile for this size of an organization with you know that's just starting up and doesn't have a lot of doesn't have a huge donor database. Okay. Um, so thanks. So is that something that you do the in kind donations have to have to happen before they're used for the match or can you get the person under contract to say we will provide X amount of services? No, I would say in terms of co any sort of commitments, you should have a commitment form um, that the the entity receiving the commitment completes. Um, and basically, you know, it's it's a time stamped form that lays out all the information. A commitment can be something as vague as a, a verbal handshake, but um, you know, ideally, you have inputted the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why, and then you file that form and you also track it in some sort of larger donor database um, um, you know in terms of number of hours estimated value of their work etc um, but at the very least we should have some sort of commitment form um, either for you know commitments of cash or in-kind services I would contend so. anything more on grants Satisfies. Uh, feasibility study. Who we need a, a motion? Yeah. Oh yeah, you did one. I'd like to make a motion that we um, submit a letter of intent to um, submit a proposal to the Department of Public Service. Is there a second? All second. Correct seconds. Any more discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Feasibility study, business plan. Who was reporting on this? Anyone? You. <laughs> <laughs> the business development. I'm going to leave. You just. <laughs> I know. The business development committee, uh, and it's, it, it, I guess, has been working on this. I mean, Jerry, and myself, and Michael, and Greg, and the whole committee has been working on this. We completed a draft version about two weeks ago, and it's been circulated within the committee and. The, I didn't get a lot of comments, but Jerry went through the whole thing, and we there's a second version on the shareable drive right now that um, the members have, and it basically has been you know followed some of the grant language we have in the USDA grant that we said we were going to do, and then um, a few other things that were not in that grant that I think we needed to have in the RFP, like timetables and all the boilerplate stuff you need to put out an RFP. The other thing is, um, and I'll put these documents on the, my Google Drive because I don't know how to get things onto the CV Fiber Drive yet. So I'll be sending out a, a link onto my Google Drive, which you won't even know where it is, but you'll be able to access the RFP, the, the grant application stuff, um, survey results, and I have one other thing I want everybody to have access to. Oh, oh yeah. So Greg Kelly, and he can talk to this, and Jared Thomas prepared a really nice diagram of, of getting the whole process of the the um, operation together. And I'm going to put that on the web if that's okay with you. Greg, you want to describe it a little bit? Sure. I'll, look, I'll provide you an updated one. So I've updated it too, so this ought to okay. be good. <laughs> we can coordinate on that. But So I have a few copies. I didn't... Uh, I think that we will be, but we'll have to share. Um, but basically, looking at what needs to be done, uh, and and who could do that. So, you know, there's so it steps through the the steps of getting from uh, qualifying towns to through to. Uh, being ready for construction. So, uh, and, and what I wanted to do, so we did, uh, several of us went down and met with uh, ValleyNet 
So I want to update with some of their input on this. So, uh, so that will be available. I'll, I'll have an update. You and I can update together yeah. and uh, within a few days have available for everybody to be able to download. So that's, I mean, in terms of the discussion, I don't know, we, you know, Jeremy hasn't really outlined how board members post things onto our Google Drive or not, or who has permission to do that. So in the meantime, I've just taken upon myself that I think I have a, a list, a mail list for the Business Development Committee, and I'll just send, I send links to my Google Drive documents, and then, um, there's an, and then I, yeah, no, it's, it's sort of interesting how do we manage all the information we're going to be developing and collecting and organizing. So we need a data structure. We need all of those things. <laughs> but um, I'm not in charge of that part. So, And, and I, I was at uh, the last business development meeting, we found out from David how much data he has, that, which is a lot of it would be a consultant saying, oh, we need to get this data. Well, David already has the data. So that, that accelerates and, and simplifies. So, and, and a lot of that data was from Green Mountain Power, but we could then be going to WEC and saying, well, would you provide this kind of data uh, and see if they have it to be able to provide. So uh, Greg, uh, WEC has given us their poll data, but the one thing I added to this whole thing today, I talked to Barry Bernstein, who can't be here tonight. Um, they are negotiating a contract with Velco to run fiber to all their substations. So that actually has some benefit, potential benefit to us. I don't know. Michael, what do you think? Sure. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so things are going, there's a lot of pieces moving. I mean, it seems like it's awfully slow, but at the same time, it's, I don't know if we can go any faster. Did, didn't Barry tell us that when he was here two months ago? Oh, I don't know. He may have. I thought yeah, that you was may have mentioned something about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we could ask them where they are on that because two months have gone by. And Isn't the, they're developing a contract? They are. So they've agreed then to do it. Evidently, just, it's I mean, just I didn't a get fine all the point. Detail on a phone call that we can get updated. He was waiting for hearing our our the two people who were supposed to work with them and partners to get in touch with them. He didn't know that we had done that. So there's one more deal we have to okay. execute. So it seems like for the next agenda, we should put this item, as far as feasibility business plan, back on the agenda and have maybe go back to some of the discussions we had earlier and some of the people who presented to us yeah. who might be they're capable of doing that kind of work. For they're us. probably all capable of doing yeah. it in different degrees. And I think, at a minimum, they would be the list. Right. That's what I would think. Too. Okay. Could I just sort of interject to go back to Jeremy, for the Jeremy. <laughs> There's lots of. Um, could, couldn't we authorize him to get a, um, like a presentation from this gentleman that says, uh, you know, this is what I've done, and and because to me, like you said, you can't have a business without a website. And and we sort of have a website, but yeah. And and if we could make it usable, then we could guide people there. We could send people there, and they could be, oh my God, I want to join. Um, and have a donate button on yeah. the website. Well, we do have <laughs> a donate button. It's really <laughs> small. We don't need to criticize what we have. We just need to acknowledge what we have is not doing the job, and why should it? You know, and but. You know, here's a person that says he knows somebody who's willing to do it for nothing, and we don't have any money, and money's money, right? I Those mean, two things kind of go together. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, well, also, you were saying he uh, also does marketing, and that's yeah. certainly something else that we've got to consider at some point down the road. I think. So maybe the two of them would be, maybe the two of you could sit down, and, and he could give you something that was in writing, but the two of you could sort of come with something substantial and because if he's willing to give us twenty five hundred dollars of his time, yeah. that's a ton of money. Yeah. And my only concern about that is who owns it after. Right, and that's the a really good point. Really good point. And and we should own it. 
Right. Yeah. Is he willing to do that? Well, I don't know. I, yeah. I haven't gotten into him. I just right. got connected with him as yep. a person. And he's, he's in Marshfield and runs a design company, okay. like a, runs a, a graphic design company. And he's got like six meg internet. And he says it's really hurting his business. Mm -hmm. So he's highly motivated to help out. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. Worth pursuing. So, um, a couple meetings ago, we were talking about the website, and we had somebody volunteer to, to do, to be headed up, although they weren't a designer. But we also talked about the elements of the website that we expected. So I think that probably what we need to do is identify what we need, hand it to your buddy, get a <laughs> get a you know, and he'll 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 tell us what kind of hours he's going to put into this kind of thing, and we'll have a feel for going forward. Mm -hmm. Good idea. So, yeah. does anybody have the list of the things? <coughs> Should be in the minutes wanted? from two months ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Minutes and presentations, and we had a whole yeah. list of yeah. 10 things, maybe. Maybe mm -hmm. a bit more of a cooperative process. If he's used to designing these, he probably has a better sense of this is what you actually want to put on your website in order to make well, that, it. Well, yeah. that too, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Anyway, well, we have content, and let him uh, come up with a design on how to display it and make it consumable. Mm -hmm. So this gentleman is, is an alternate, so who on the board might we, the three of them, can get together? It, I mean, it doesn't matter yeah. uh, whether an alternate or a delegate, he yeah. can certainly no, but the represent. Alternate, have you been here every time? I mean, you, I mean I've been here you, since course. last, uh, since this since spring. Since you got your email yeah. right. Since you got my email right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can fix that. <laughs> Jeremy's been coming to the business development. Meetings. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he and Jared Thomas, who is actually building, who's created the development website that has not much content. So Jared and Jeremy and this guy from Plainfield could probably get together and yeah. put yeah. this thing, at least make some good progress on it. Mm -hmm. And then sure. Jeremy Hansen and or I can meet Sorry. with you guys to, to get the life. content to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we should start thinking pretty quickly then about, mm -hmm. you know, if we are going to have this guy do work for us and if he's going to do it for free, then we need to start figuring out all this in-kind donation tracking. Mm -hmm. um, especially if it's going to help us with the USDA grant. Mm -hmm. And I guess we need to figure out if it's going to help us with the Vermont grant as well. Well, is it for free or is it in-kind? It'd be an in-kind. Well, I mean, if he's donating his design services, or he's donating. Okay. Yeah. If if he's saying I'm doing this for free, then we can call it an in-kind donation. I right. think, right? That's right. Um, Especially if we have a commitment from him and right. a piece of paper. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Little green light, you said. In fact, this you raised a good question. We should have documentation forms for all of this because Jeremy's been. I mean, uh, Jared's been donating time. I've been donating time. A lot of people have been doing it in time. We should definitely be tracking, despite the fact that we're a municipality, we should be tracking all volunteer yeah. hours. Yeah. Because it's valuable. <laughs> yeah, it is. Michael? It's so just money. to that point, and then I want to change the topic. Um, in our in the Crafts, town of Craftsbury project, all the committee members um, tracked their time, and USDA Rural Development and NBRC accepted those tabulations as in-kind contributions towards their grants. So that is important. Um, I think we've sort of wrapped that discussion up, so I wanted to go back to the other one we were just I, on. I think there may have been one more point. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the other point is that uh, once it's designed, it has to be maintained. Yeah, well, and so the, the trick of, uh, you know, here's the design work, here's all the content that's up there. Somebody then has to feed the, feed the beast. And occasionally there's some redesign. There's another element that's added like uh, progress, you know, what's going on. Um, so we have to figure out that part, the back end part. Sure. Well, I mean, if we own it, then we can hire a different designer to fix the other guy's work. Um, I agree that if we don't own it, it's a lot less valuable to us. Um, and the other thing is, if this guy does good work and he's got reasonable rates, you know, we can't, you know there's nothing that says that we can't continue on hiring him as a as a subcontractor, after you know we've sort of exhausted his ability or his willingness to give us free <laughs> services, so I guess that would be my response to that. 
So, Michael, you wanted to go back yeah, to I something? Yeah, I want to go back to the feasibility study discussion. Okay. Um, I'm confused. Um, at one point, we were bringing in presentations and sort of leaning towards picking someone. And correct me if I'm wrong in my understanding, but I think at some point we said, uh -uh, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do an RFP and wait for a bunch of submissions. And that process was going to start a while ago. Or maybe it was going to start once we get one of these grants. And I'm confused as to why we don't have a clear process to get to a consultant. It is, are we waiting for something to put out an RFP? Or are we considering not doing it through an RFP process, but through a consensus discussion about the, about presentations we've seen? Does anybody know? Let me tell you one thing. I did not write an RFP not to put it out to bid. <laughs> so you have one. You, I've shared it with you. I forgot. <laughs> no wonder you're not And I mean, we didn't have any money to put an RFP out too. I mean, that was one thing. But, Timing? Because we couldn't pay the consultant yet. Correct. Right. So what? one comment on that, and then I'll shut up. That's cool. um, lots of consultants are willing to take their money later. Um, it depends on their financial sure. situation, but that's not unusual. If they think if, if it's towards a grant that's going to pay for them, they'll do it. <laughs> you know, I think we also got sidetracked because of the whole, um, not EC Fiber, but ValleyNet discussions that Jeremy's brought up right. for a couple of times, which at least in my understanding of that, would kind of preclude all of, no? You think? Well, I, I, to me, I vote against it. It could <laughs> preclude, but I, yeah, I don't but, think there's a sentiment yeah. around the table oh, okay. that it should. Well, in the meeting that we went to with ValleyNet, uh, Michael, you went, myself, mm -hmm. and uh, Jeremy was there. And Jeremy, and, and Rick. they weren't offering to write the whole RP. They're willing to help. Okay. You know, give their input, but they weren't going to say, "Oh, here it is." <laughs> that was what was said in the meeting. Okay. I guess I'm a little. I'm with you now. I'm, I'm a little bit I more remember confused Jeremy even. Henson did say they, at early in his early discussions with them, that they proposed to write up a whole thing, a whole plan, right. and we wouldn't need a consultant anymore. Right. We would just that was that was something go I with heard. them, and yeah, it would go from there. Right. We'd raise money, fund a piece of the development, mm -hmm. which is a very different process than. So that's not what, what they're saying now, saying? is what you're saying. I didn't hear that. Did you hear them say that, Rick? So what I thought, my takeaway from the meeting was that they were going to come back to us with a proposal with a series of agreements. Right. Right. Okay, right. potential agreements, with the last agreement being an operating agreement, if we go that, if we go with that direction. But it was like uh, preparing the feasibility study, preparing the business plan, writing the statement of work for this, that, and the other thing. But there was a series of like three or four steps. Okay. Um, and my, what I, my takeaway was they were going to provide us with that. And they're going to provide us with a proposal. They, they, they're going to provide us with a proposal. Right. Right. Of but it also, I agree with you, that yeah. was said, but that in that, we still had to provide a lot of the, the specifics. So they already have a template, I'm sure. You know, they've done it. Right. And they were saying, yes, they'll do it, but we still had to provide a lot of the, the data that goes into it. Um, true. But they already had a business plan template. Yes. And based on their experience of N years, right. that they could fold our information into. Right. And so that's what I meant by them saying they would help. Mm -hmm. Right. That, you know, yes, they, they probably be, would be doing the majority of the work. Right. But there was work that we still would have to do. So would we be <coughs> hiring them to do that work, or would they be doing that gratis? Hiring them. Hiring they was want the sense. That's, that's, that's why there's a series of agreements. Yeah. Okay. And was there a time frame around when they would be delivering that, or was it more the next steps? 
I get so they could respond to the RFP that you've put yeah, out. That's what I was just I, about I think to we're say. public body, so I don't think we can just yeah. hire somebody. Yeah, so okay. I'm, I'm, okay. I guess yeah. I'm a public servant yeah. at the moment. So yeah. they, can, they can build on that. They can respond to the right. RFP. Right. We can evaluate it compared to all of the other stuff right. that comes in. Okay. All five and of them. And if they have things ready made, they'll, be, they'll have a cheap bid. Right. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm we much more comfortable with that kind of process. So. Um, the one I forgot. And again, I, I, um, you know, we're not getting much done except putting stuff on uh, next month's agenda. But again, I think that's probably something we really have to have some serious discussion about, um, so that we can move forward in a in a timely manner and um, you know get this this process going and start evaluating um, proposals. The My trick is the timing of all these grants being available later than we want them to be. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out, well, do we tread water and then get their money to do these things, or do we get started now and hope we we'll get the money to cover them? I think we well, can get going right now. We have money. We have, you know, fifty thousand dollars, tentatively fifty thousand plus twenty something, seven thousand dollars worth of match money, uh, in kind money. So we're ready to roll. Um, well, we need to raise fifty-five hundred more dollars. Right. Yeah. Right. In the next, we'd be assured of it all. Like getting the RFP responses, reviewing that, yeah. that's all going to take time. Take so we may as well yeah. get that out. Right. Yeah. So what are the next steps with regards to the RFP? I was hoping the, the Business Development Committee could weigh in and say this is it and we can, you know, issue it. <laughs> I, when did I read it? I don't know. You never read it. I probably did. No, because you have comment. I mean, there was, I think... Yeah, the person I think that read it was Jerry and, and Ken. Yes. <laughs> Ken actually had a good contribution, so yeah. I'm happy about that. So I have some uh, comments to make on it. But right we, what we can set a time by when we would yeah. have it ready. I'll send it back. I'll send out a note to the business. So we get moving. But the goal of September 1st, right? right? Okay. That's a reasonable goal. Two weeks, and we're going to we're all going to see the RFP. So, so the next we'll item, we'll again. Again. Are we, no, I think the committee is going to issue the RFP. He didn't ask that question. We didn't <laughs> ask. I asked whether we were going to see it. Anybody can. See. Oh yeah, no, everybody would get it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I don't mean Pro get it, and we're going to see it because it's been posted. We're going to see it in advance. Absolutely. On your Google Drive. On your Google Drive. Yeah. Or, Somewhere posted in the cloud. <laughs> Come to the next. Okay, moving on. Yeah. And I have no idea what this one is about, and and not to put you on the spot, but it's treasurer position. So I, I don't know what it's about. <laughs> I mean, I know we've had the discussion before, but okay. I have, I haven't had a discussion about it. We haven't had a discussion about it, and we haven't had a finance committee meeting. So. Okay. I'm not sure. And I didn't hear anything from Jeremy about okay. what it was. Jeremy so. had asked for suggestions for the budget, and I sent him an email that said oh, treasurer remuneration or something like that. Oh, that must be where that came. Because happened. that should be a budget item. Sure. Concerned, so. Okay, so you think that might be? That, uh, when I saw it, I thought, hmm, I wonder if that was my email. <laughs> okay. Um, another uh, item for next month. You know what? We can just re reissue the same <laughs> same agenda. And, uh, okay. Uh, Front porch forum. Jeremy Hanson. He's not here. Uh, survey. Back to David. It's the David meeting. Thank God he came. Well, or or we all would have been they, home. Uh, <laughs> The, a number of, I mean, I can tell you the towns that somebody put posted the survey on their front porch forum would be Berlin, Cabot, Callis, East Montpelier, Marshfield, Middlesex, Montpelier, Orange, Plainfield, and Williamstown. The rest of the towns still looks like it hasn't been posted yet because there's no orange. No, when did um, Williamstown post it? Because I get the forum and I never saw it. Well, somebody did in Williamstown. You know what could have happened? If somebody in Orange posted it and said it was okay to show up, I did. Town, yeah. I do. Yeah. So I it, do. it was the Orange posting that ended up in Williamstown. Dun, dun. I think the Plainfield posting ended up in Marshfield. Probably. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Brand, <laughs> Brand forwarded it on. So. Gotcha. 
Um, appreciate it. Anyway, so so far, 455 people have wow. filled out the survey. Good. Um, 125 of them in the city of Montpelier, and that was because, and this is interesting, the mayor put it on her front on her, on her Facebook page. Uh -huh. So that's how effective certain mechanisms are of marketing or getting people to do things. Um, so that's sort of the tally at the moment. I think in Cal's we had 54 people, and that was after putting it in front porch for them twice. And my next step in Calus is to ask the select board to put it on itself, the chair of the select board is, as well as put it on the town's website, which it's not on right now. Um, but in terms of getting people to fill this out via just normal internet methods, I don't think we're going to get a lot more people. I think the second posting is a good idea. After three <laughs> weeks, that's what I did. And it doubled the number of people who filled it in. How many did you get from Middlesex? Middlesex were at um, about 52. Okay. How many oranges? Uh, I truncated that piece of the <gasps> film, the report, sorry. She's going to ask me. I don't know. When that. orange looks like there's about 15. Wow. Holy cats. <laughs> what what, what did you want to close time? this by? Well, I don't know if it's going to be something i got to go back to the business committee about because it's a key piece of the feasibility study. Okay. So we need to figure out what is the rationale for a, a decent number, and do we want to have us do more legwork to get more people to fill it in? Okay. Or do we want to um, I have the consultant going do it? door to door. Up and door to door. Well, they, we, we have some other ideas on door to door stuff, right, Greg? Refresh my memory. <laughs> <laughs> whole inventory. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Maybe you're pulling cable. Yeah. 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 Just, uh, we're going to some younger members. We'll get later than that. Is right. <laughs> but some of the, the, the biggest highlight takeaway so far from the 450 people that have filled it in is the, if CB5 are brought comp competitively priced broadband service, so community, how likely are you to su subscribe? Nearly 50% said definitely would, and another 43% said probably would. So there's a pretty large, of the people who filled out this form, a survey, which are probably an interesting subset of the community, it's a good sign. And interested. The, pardon? And interested, and interested subset, not an interesting, but interested. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yes. The second question that became you know, so eye-popping is, in stating that you would definitely or probably subscribe to CV Fiber, what are your primary reasons? And quality of service is greater than 50%. Um, Improve reliability, 52%. Preferred locally owned, 52%. Prefer highest speed, 68%. Then the most interesting question is, would you be willing to invest in the planning, construction, and or operation of this network in the first 24 months of operation? Uh, about 60 people said they'd loan money. About 30 people said they'd give a gift. And 250 people said they would pre-subscribe. So that's pretty interesting data. Um, and then from the ValleyNet meeting, they said of those that, for, in their experience, uh, those that said they would uh, pre-subscribe when they actually went to them saying, we're coming to your town, it was about 80%. Yeah, that wow. those. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Bad. No. <coughs> so if we could get more people to fill in the survey, it would certainly yeah. be helpful. I, yeah. How does um, pre-subscribe work? Mm -hmm. I've been asked the question, how does the pre-subscribe You know how CSA work? works? Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. First Give thing. us money and we'll eventually get the internet to you. So it's an internet CSA. It's an internet CSA. So, so you start paying a monthly amount, and at some point you do get service, and you don't have to pay for a certain number of months until that's coming. You know, this is, this is yeah. one of those things you can get a customer database. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can say, this customer paid two years in advance, even though we don't have the service. So there's a lot of pieces to make this happen. I mean, well, there's no doubt we do about that, it. though, like I, I was asked that question as well, and I, and I told the lady that I couldn't answer, that they were just not there yet, because we don't know what our rate structure is, right. yeah, so right. we can't say that we'll give you 12 months of service for, a, you know, $500 until we know what, yeah. you know, 12 months of service is going to cost. So. Anything else on the survey? I Alan and I talked about doing the survey in Worcester, and we, unfortunately, we didn't, neither one of us got to do it. But 
Our feeling is that, and you can correct me, our feeling is that doing it rather than asking interested people to reply is to ask everybody that you can find to do it. To just go face to face and and have maybe a smaller survey because there's only a few really important questions on the survey. A lot of other questions, you know, you, you would start with the important and then work your way up to the other questions. But, you know, just saying to people, you know, the only people that are going to fill it in are the ones that are mainly dissatisfied with the service that they have. And they may just be a smaller of 500 people out of central Vermont. There's not very many, not a very high percentage. Um, but if, but if, you know, I, I think that Alan and I should so you know. Go the, the, so going to the Worcester um, transfer station, right? On Saturday morning? And yeah, but yeah. I, I never go to the train. And there's no, lots of no, people that never go there. I go the question to is, how do you reach people? <laughs> you on their door. Oh, all right. Okay. If I can get everybody to knock on doors, be great. Thing in Worcester, don't you? And I'll get yeah, but a lot of people that, come from outside of Worcester. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really popular, it's a great thing. <laughs> David, what if we were willing to go door to door? How would we get the numbers into the survey? Off your phone. Yeah. Do it on the phone. What if you don't have cell phone? Cell 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 you can store it and then upload it later. Yeah, Would because you we have very little cell service anywhere in Worcester. Yeah. <laughs> if you do it on paper, I'll data enter it. Uh, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a paper no, copy of the data? Uh, yeah, I can I, create one. Data entry, I can do is a Would you send it to him? It's a digital form right now. I don't have any cell service. <laughs> so, yes, I'll do that. Um, what was I going to say? I think that Putting that Abraham together, nice just to finish my spiel here, just putting it together face to face from Worcester, where cell service and internet all are terrible, um, we would be able to judge the 500 that came from the interested people as to whether or not that's a real number. You know, is that is that representative by is that a representative number, not a real number, but a representative number Virginia. of interest? Is there anyone on the board with some strong, significant statistical Virginia. background that can say Tobacco this amount of percentages? This is the coefficient of variation, and yeah. we can probably that gentleman right next to you. <laughs> well, well, I think I the mean, best you know, data is coming from EC Fiber, and they, they share. The 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 if we really want to have a statistically balanced survey, we could contract with UVM and the CDAE program, and they or could conduct program. the survey for us, but and they would do it by telephone, no, by telephone. and no, and no, also through, through mailings and all of that. But I mean, also that's going to cost more than that's going to cost more to money, money. And, or you could get like an intern or something like that. Or um, what we could also do is well, I just would like to say one thing to keep in mind is that all data tells a story, and right now. This data is telling a very, very positive story. Sure. And if we should not hesitate to use the information that we've collected already in terms of like the percentages of persons who are interested when we apply for grants and that sort of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Even though even if we're gonna move forward with a more formal sure. or more statistically valid survey. Mm -hmm. But I was just wondering if there's like if we can do a fairly easy run at it and say this is a, a low bar number that if we get over five, I mean, 500 is actually a very large number for a statistical survey. Yeah. But it's not statistical because it is selection bias. Yeah, it's, it's got yeah. some bias. It doesn't mean it's not it's statistical. It means you have to change the number. Yeah, and if you do telephone yeah. surveys, you're only getting, going to get a percentage of the population that's over the age of 30 because it's all landlines because mm -hmm. rarely are telephone surveys conducted or, or, or rarely are you reaching cell phones via those surveys. And if you do paper surveys, you're going to get another subset of the population. So I'm getting to a point where I don't answer my cell phone anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's such a mess, to be perfectly no, but, frank. But, <laughs> but to bring it back here, if, if Alan and I, there's okay. what, seven roads in Worcester. So, you know, <laughs> but they're really long. <laughs> they're not that long, you know. We all have bicycles, and uh, so, you know, 
uh, we could do it in a in a week. This is really. a great case for this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if, if what, what David was referring to was that we'll also charge you with getting the poll numbers as you're going. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the polls are in the woods, and you know, well, well, the thing about Worcester anyway is that Washington Electric has polls, and the phone company has polls, and sometimes they share a poll, a tall poll. Washington Electric has tall poles, and a phone company has short poles. Right. And, you know, they're all going to fall over any day now, the, the phone company. So I don't know if the, I don't know whether or not even caring about poles is going to matter, but in the long run. It'll probably will. But probably will. <laughs> anyway, yeah, keep track of your hours on, on that because that'll, yeah. that'll make for a good income <laughs> contribution. We prefer it if you walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One last question, Michael. No, not a question. Comment on door-to-door um, -door is the best way. Yeah. This by hands down the best way to get an accurate poll of the populace. The more people will be home, you're going to get a greater cross-section. <laughs> but even with seven roads in a town, it's a lot of work. If you know, it's going to take a long time for each survey to be filled out, or the spiel, the explanation you're giving, and all that. It takes a long time. One way to but, make but nobody's self-selected, so it doesn't. I, so you're still I, getting a right. statistically accurate sample. I'm not disagreeing. Okay. Um, but what I'm suggesting for everybody, whether it's Worcester or anywhere else, is to think about skipping homes, do, doing it consistently every three or every six or every two or every seven homes, that's statistically good too. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to knock on every door, but you do want to get, you want to cover large areas and get large numbers. Figure out how many we can do in a weekend or a week or a month, and then figure out how many d doors you have to skip in order to achieve that. That's my suggestion. I, I, this this, this sounds point. like a recipe for revolution. I mean, my neighbor, if I don't go to his house, but I go to the next person's house, I'm going to know it. I'm going to get him no zucchini. I'm not going to have my driveway so plowed. You should, you should do Marshfield, and Marshfield should do <laughs> Good point. You know, I think too many roads we'll, we'll let... <laughs> The Worcester representatives <laughs> figure this out for themselves <laughs> and do whatever feels good to you. I'll get you. Okay, we'll trust you. Okay, and we'll look forward to my the suggestion for everybody. Reports. Yeah. And there you go. I would like to. We really need to close the survey down by the end of September. Okay. Oh, we can I mean, uh, in terms in terms of it, we got a consultant that needs to work with this data. Right. That's my feeling. So, the urgency is there. Yeah, right. Somebody has some better ideas uh, about other, how to collect On the it. other hand, the, these feasibility grants are going to be awarded in November. Well, the well, USDA one we have. So are we going to tell the state, well, we don't really need yes. to do a feasibility oh, one because we've done it? <laughs> that's <laughs> confusing, too. No, we need to do it because that's a requirement to get the money, but well, we want the second 30 pass. Right, right. But there's, there's no for what you've already restriction done. That, us doing a lot of that work. And that's what I said to Clay Purvis. I said, you know, I want to apply, and I don't need a feasibility study, so what am I supposed to do with this thing? What did he tell you? I would, he said, we didn't think of that. <laughs> and he said, maybe in the next round we can make some adjustments. And I said, but that means that delays certain people a long time. So that we will all feed him this question. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're not the only ones. You're not the only. I mean, it's, it's a problem. So. Moving on. Yes. Reports back from meetings with other ISPs. Now, this was Jeremy's agenda, but I have a feeling it's what you already told us about as far as meeting with Valina. There were a couple of others, Can, Can, but we weren't there. Jeremy. Only Jeremy. Jeremy met with uh, uh, the Northfield Cable, what's it called? Trans Transvideo. Oh, Transvideo. He spoke mm -hmm. to George Goodrich from Transvideo. Wasn't it just Jeremy? Anyone else? It was because he just talked to him on the phone, didn't he? I don't know. He reported it the last time, though. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought he's, all right. Uh, and was there, and oh, and, Saint, and um, Champlain Valley, did he report about that last meeting? He spoke to them as well. Um, I think committees should be doing that. Groups of people should be doing that. But anyhow, I can't speak we to don't know. what he learned. So another uh, carryover item. Mm -hmm. 
But we can talk about the ballot net thing. Okay. Oh, we just did. Well, we did. We did? Yeah. yeah. Enough? Were you here? I I, yeah, I was awake for that part. Don't be cruel. <laughs> and it's back to David. <laughs> no, I can be on everything. Business was, Development Committee. That pretty much is, we've already covered everything the Business Development Committee did. So oh, okay. meeting. Thanks for that report. Yeah. Budget. <laughs> we should have one. Yep. Well, we probably ought to be developing it anytime soon. And I think where it was left is that myself and Jeremy and Becca were. Well, people were going to send things, their needs, to Jeremy. And we were going to go from there. Okay. So I suspect we don't have a lot of information yet except for treasurers. <laughs> Treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's put that one on the next agenda, too. Okay. Um, review of back burner items, committee assignments, and membership. Now, the back burner items are whether or not we should allow other towns in, and there was still equipment policy. Anybody have a burning desire to bring up either of these items? I just wanted to mention that when I sent out that survey, I got an email from somebody that I should have up right now. Any second now. No, I'll really have it. Um, <laughs> Talk us through this now. Who wanted, if she wanted to know if we were coming to Corinth, I think. I think that was it. Mm -hmm. And I said, Talk to your select board. I didn't say no because we haven't committed to any other towns. Right. So I said, um, if I, I pull, first I pulled up on the map to see exactly, because I've been there. I used to go to a midnight there, but that doesn't mean anything to me. And so, um, well, it means something to me, but just not that. And, and, and so I, I looked it up on a map, and it looked like if Washington signed on, Corinth would be right next door. I think it was Corinth. Because it was tops. Anyhow. Maybe it was tops. Anyway, they're all wet towns. Yeah, but it was all, but all in that area. And I said, okay. well, you need to talk to your select board and get them to, to com com communicate with us. Okay. And that was where that ended. But it, it came up when okay. I sent out because they were very excited. She was very excited at the possibility. So, so just. Is there a committee that's responsible for this task? Because what I think we need as a product is a document that describes these are the these are the criteria that this body looks for for to um, entertain membership of a different town. There is not. And I'm, I'm willing um, to draft at least right that. now. I was going to say, did I'll, you draft, draft, I'll draft. Well, that, but the I need question to go is whether or not we are going to accept I more know. membership, sure. or you know, when we've not settled. The last last meeting we hashed it out pretty well. We did. We decided and 23. You know, we're here, right? Uh, or 22. So we kind of the consensus was kind of we don't really want a bunch more towns. Okay. There are a couple of them that we would encourage, and I think they were more town. More town in Washington was it? Waterbury, I think was. No. Washington no? was definitely on. Washington, Washington, Washington was definitely on. More town in Washington okay. were the two towns that we might encourage, but that we were. Feeling like maybe we don't want to expand any bigger yet. Mm -hmm. Or certainly not open. seek out other folks. Yeah. But we would consider if they came to us. We, did, we didn't close it. We left we didn't it close open. It. We didn't we left close it open. It. No. And I think Jeremy was talking about a number like 20 or something, mm -hmm. but we didn't come down firmly in that. He had a couple of places he wanted to talk to next, and we kind of let him go do that. Yeah. And But it's left open. Yeah, yeah that's why I have a recollection too. Um, and I think it probably does call the question that's something we need to decide sooner than later. Especially as we start moving forward, if we're going to start taking grant money. Start talking about feasibility. You want to have some boundaries yeah. and planning boundaries. And yeah. And we, we know that Washington Electric serves 40 towns. Right. So and that may make a difference if we, in fact, partner with them um, as we go down the road. And they may want to, I mean, I had um, some discussion with Barry about this a little while ago. He happened to be in Middlesex for some other meeting. And, um, you know, that idea that if they serve 40 towns, 
might this expand to cover the same footprint that they have? And, and you know, I said, it's certainly possible. We're going to have to talk about it. But if, if they really become um, a viable partner um, with us in that, then, and that's something they want to, you know, push for, then it's probably fairly feasible that we would look at, at doing that. I mean, it also would be much easier to do if they, you know, they already have relationships and business relationships with a lot of customers there. So, okay. Al. Does anybody know how many substations Wash Electric has? Is it like five? Is it 50? I have, is the, it seven? I have the data. I just haven't brought it up. I mean, I can tell you, but I don't know right now. Between oh, it is? Five and 50, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> you say between five and 50? All right. Boy, if that, I mean, if, if that ever gets connected to fiber, if you have all those hubs around this area, that's, uh -huh. that's an unbelievable It'd be significant. Yeah. Well, the question is how many Velco already has fiber to. Yeah. They have fiber to a significant number oh, of, right. of substations. I mean, Plainfield and East Montpelier are covered. I know that much. Is that information available? Somewhere? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, well, no, the Velco data, no. <laughs> You can see a you can see a PowerPoint slide with their stations, <laughs> and if you didn't snap it when they were showing it, Michael may know. I've got a map. You get the map. <laughs> Is it shareable, or did you send it not? I have a poster. Huh? I have a poster. I can hand you. But how old is that poster? It's old. <laughs> <laughs> but it has it has Velcro fiber in it. Yes. Well, I mean, as of okay. then. Yeah. As of then. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So can I, if I look at a substation, can I, with the naked eye, determine if it has fiber going to it? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So why don't we do if a If you know what the cable looks like, yes. Yeah. Well, I thought they all look different. This would be, really, all really, all this would be really important information you for us to have, wouldn't it? You can. Yeah. Um, Greg. I think it's all, <laughs> I think all the, sub, all the WEC substations are going to have fiber. With the exception of the one in Adamant and or Maple Corners, a couple of really tiny, tiny ones won't. Barry told me today they were going to go to Maple Corners. They are. Yeah. That's a big thing. <laughs> so, so, so in your conversation, Barry suggested sort of that they would be willing to do all forty towns, without saying it. He suggested yeah, if they're willing to yeah. do any. Yeah, right. 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 Exactly. <laughs> they, may, they still have to determine if they're going to do any. Right, but if Barry, <laughs> Barry's the heart of Washington Electric Co-op right at the moment, so. But he's still, you know, again, he indicated that there is. It's a financial decision, board. but. But we'd be money too. So. Yeah. 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 So if, if only WEC covered those 41 towns 100%, in but, fact, in most WEC towns, there are less than 50% coverage yeah, of yeah, the town. Yeah, good point. And we have to be cognizant of that. We think we're riding on WEC through all these towns, right. and we still have to work with Green Mountain Power oh. Poles and all the rest. Mm -hmm. And so that's a whole other story. Yeah, yeah. Can we get in the electric space, or are we doing make ready for those poles? Are there towns that are 100% that are WEC? Nope. No, none of them? No, I get no, you in Worcester. No, Worcester. WEC, WEC is... <laughs> A co-op, right? Yeah. yeah. And so if their members vote, say, we want this and we're willing to have our bills go up a little bit, it's a way to advance all of this. Mm -hmm. there's, there's money there. Yeah, if your town has a state highway, <laughs> I can guarantee you it's not WEC. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, but <clears throat> WEC is pretty close to this main highway also because yeah. we met oh, yeah. it's cheap. So, um, which is why. Anyway, uh, if... For those, I'll send out the link to my web map that shows everything. So yeah. you can look at it yourself. And it has the substations, it has who owns what poles where, and uh, if you want to Are spend a lot of time on the any, website. Hmm? Any FOIA issues or community information issues with you sending, or public it's meeting law it's all, stuff it's with you sending us all these links? It's all public data. Okay. I just, just want to make sure. It's not a meeting. If Unless people start responding to it. If there's right. discussion. If, okay, so if you're just sending out the information, the email, it's... Do not discuss this or, or write back to me only. Right. Thank you. Anything else? Approval of July 9th, 
minutes. Yes, due to technical difficulties of um, my printer, I do not have the minutes with me, so ah. we can move that to next month as well. Okay. <laughs> David, would you repeat, would you work on the minutes for us, repeat, would you uh, give us some information? Mm -hmm. You haven't done enough today. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, normally at this time we do a round table, but I think I'm just going to turn it over to David and let him finish out the night. What do you think? Yeah. No, it's a lot David, of work. what do we have to say? <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking for help. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do a lot, and I can do a lot, but it is sometimes a little overwhelming. Yeah. There is a Montpelier story. So tomorrow city council is going to be discussing the telecommunications needs of its public safety activities. Montpelier is a part of Central Vermont Public Safety Authority, which is also Barry and I think Berlin. I don't yeah, know. Sometimes so. they're in, sometimes they're not. Um, and and the, the, the idea, and this does have Mr. Whitaker behind it, but the city has agreed to take it on as a topic, is that the land-based radio towers will benefit from being a part of the fiber network. Some of them are served by fiber at this point. I, mean, I know that Rock of Ages is. I talked to Terry LaValle at the state. Um, but not all, and not many. Um, but for, in order to develop a system that's uh, more efficient and redundant, um, and to prepare for the first net future, which is to move to LTE signals for first responders, then indeed land-based radio towers as well as cell towers will be interconnected. So he, he is, Whitaker is requesting that the city council instruct public service of public safety authority to do a feasibility study of, of what it would take to link all of the critical elements of their telecommunications system and he is requesting City Council to request CV Fiber to coordinate its planning activities so that as we learn about infrastructure that's available, we're also considering the public safety stuff. Hmm. So you may get an instruction from myself or Dan at the next meeting that City Council has asked CV Fiber to consider in its planning to integrate with public safety. And, 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 a, and a kind of, a, I'll give, offer a supporting element to that, is it's a revenue stream. Um, the system, the public safety system, is pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and to the extent that it is going to be upgraded, um, and it needs to be upgraded for a few reasons, then thinking of it as a customer um, can be a significant revenue source. I kind of thought we already were. But maybe maybe, maybe I'm mean? forgetting. I thought we were already considering them working with public safety. I thought we'd already no. discussed that, we, and that we wanted that that was like because we talk about we talked about the space that they have on the poles, and oh. I went to a meeting with them, and okay, okay, yeah, I'm, no, no, it was public good. service. I went yeah. to public service. I went to never mind. Yeah, okay. Okay. public okay. safety is a different beast. Um, so, oh, yeah, interesting. Anything useful. for the good of the order? Me? Yeah. Yep. I have some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> now, no, now no. you tell us? <laughs> now, now I tell you. Okay. Otherwise. Anything? Anything? Yeah, so a couple of things. Um, first, like I said earlier, I have been kind of shaking a few trees, um, trying to get some money. Uh, mostly that has been harassing my neighbors, quite honestly. <laughs> um, but on that note, I did write up an email sort of like, hey, we're looking for money. So if anyone else knows people that they think might be interested and might be willing to pitch in a little bit of money or might have some fundraising ideas um, and you want a template email, let me know and I can send you that. I also sent it to Jeremy, um, never heard back from him, so. Um, Did you get anything with it? Was it successful? I don't know. Okay. I mean, I, I didn't like say, hey, if you donate, please tell me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, I see. I mean, if, if our, I mean, and I missed the, the budget if we got money in this month, but. Not from your town. 
not from my town. Okay. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, I wasn't successful, so maybe you don't want to use my email. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice uh, It's a video. I had drafted an appeal letter also, I yeah. think, back right around Christmas time and sent okay. it out, too. So. Um, and another thing is, one thing I did get was a person that is my neighbor said that he might have some fundraising ideas. So I'm planning to talk to him in a week or so and see if you see what he has and then would probably end up bringing that here if it's something that the board would need to do rather than sort of an informal thing. Okay. Can you jump in real quick. No um, <laughs> just on that about the getting donations, how many respondents have we had about the survey from Front Porch Forum? Four hundred and fifty. So would it be worth putting something on Front Porch Forum that requests donations and see if we get 100 people to donate? Well, I will, I will dig out all the people who said they would donate, <laughs> send it to the respective people yeah. who uh, said they would from each town. Great. Yeah. Then we can each sign. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I do have a comment. Okay. Um, I missed a few meetings. I, I wasn't on the list. We'll get that straight okay. But um, I was thinking about an audience that maybe you haven't talked about is gamers. <laughs> Gamers want high speed internet. Higher is better. Yeah. So there might be some money there. Not quite sure how we reach them, but it's just something I'd like to throw. The dark out. web. The people with the lights <laughs> on at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my guess is they probably have a listserv. Go on raids. Yeah, probably do. Uh, George, the join the game and tell them to give us money. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Are you from Plainfield? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not shooting you. That's because I have faster internet than you. <laughs> it's like herding Shiny. cats tonight, you know? But gotta keep it. I agree with the gaming uh, sentiment. They walk among us. Uh, I think. Um, in terms of appeal letters, the best, most effective kinds of appeal letters tell stories. Um, I think one thing that we should consider by, you know, sending letters to people and posting on Front Porch Forum is gathering stories, collecting stories like the person in Marshfield who, because of the, their incredibly slow internet, their business is struggling. Um, telling that person's story with their permission is going to be essential if we are actually going to be composing and issuing appeal letters that are designed to generate a massive influx of cash. Um, so, you know, I every organization that I've worked for that has drafted these sorts of appeal letters, we I, I have even participated in things where we've issued one email where it's just saying what we're doing and here's how we're helping people, and I've done an issue uh, an email where I've um, it's telling a story of one person and how they're impacted by the work that the organization does and those. That latter email is about eight times more effective than the former. Mm -hmm. So that's good to know. I mean, there are best practices when it comes to mm -hmm. drafting and issuing appeals letters or emails or or posting on social media, and I think we should take that into consideration. But story gathering is first and foremost. Um, All right, I'll see if I can get that guy's great. permit. I, I assume yeah. he wouldn't mind. But yeah. Yeah. Can I ask can I yeah. Follow up to that. Sure. This is a campaign. Mm -hmm. It's not a bunch of people just sending out some letters. It, it has to be an organized campaign, and maybe the marketing guy, web design, design guy, is a guy to help us uh, sure. formulate the campaign. And we say that we say the campaign starts one October, or pick a date, but and then we, we work toward that and come up with our message and what the letters are going to be, what the campaign is going to be. It, we need to get it's organized. Now. Mm -hmm. Press releases. Just a thought. I mean, like I said, I was just emailing my neighbor saying, hey, get something. Yeah, somebody wants to chair the, the marketing committee, and we'll throw some other people on it, and we'll, create a and we'll, and we'll, and we'll focus on this campaign. The trick is to not oversaturate your no, no, audience. No, that's right. So, you know. yeah. Tom? I'll, I'll use my round table bit to say I think I've heard like three awesome ideas here. Yeah. Can we, before we leave the room, make them actionable somehow? <laughs> appoint, appoint somebody quickly. <laughs> I don't have a suggestion beyond that. So. <laughs> I mean, should, should we put it to a committee or something like that? We could. We could. I'll see what. Greg? Well, uh, I agree with Ray. We need to get organized so we have. $5,500 remaining to raise, mm -hmm. and then we will have 
fifty thousand dollars. So, you know, there's a bit of a story in that as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. But uh, getting organized and, and having some people focus on it, then the rest of us receiving that can disseminate that. But if it's left to each one of us to try to draft the email, I mean, it's not going to be very effective. So, uh, but we should focus on that, take some action. Michael. I'm going to try to remember to take my memory pills. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send out an email. Yeah, no, Alex will send a reminder for you. That's right. A recurring reminder. <laughs> right. So I, the public safety idea is a, a very interesting one. And it, what I'm hearing is it sounds like the city of Montpelier wants CV Fiber to somehow coordinate some communications capabilities within the public safety community in Montpelier. It, it sounds like, frankly, something that's needed in all the communities, right? Yeah, and that, it, that was the origins of CVPSA, was that multiple communities would work together on a communication yeah. system because there's and, and it seems like that could be leveraged for public funds. I mean, we don't have, to my knowledge, we don't have commitments from our communities to contribute. But here's a value-add service that that uh, they could benefit from, which would help seed, perhaps, some level of effort. So if this could be somehow um, organized, <laughs> aggregated, you know, put into a, into a, uh, a plan uh, from Montpelier, probably to start with, uh, perhaps we can see how it can be extrapolated for the whole uh, organization. Well, and, and there's a money aspect to this. The Central Vermont Public Safety Authority has money and so they are prepared to spend money on a planning piece. And so whether, and I don't know how to do this, but whether it can be crafted so that some of their money goes to Central Vermont Fiber Planning, covering the in-kind contract, covering the matching, oh, right. our matching the needs. Mm -hmm. But I, again, I don't know how to make that happen, but that's a possibility because it is, that, that is, there's overlap in those planning, understanding what the, the hard infrastructure is for a public safety communication system, what already exists, integrated with our planning, if take $5,000 from yeah. them for our $30,000 effort, then we've got $5,000 of match. So I've only been here since, what, April, May, or whatever it was, but I haven't heard at this table that um, uh, we have the capability, frankly, to do planning for public safety. No, we're gonna hire. Yeah, it would wind up hiring somebody to do that. Right. Yeah, uh, but this is a very interesting piece. Look forward to seeing what Montpelier uh, yeah. is looking. They'll say, do it. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we, 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 yeah. a nice statement of work would be a would be a good start as to what do it means. But we'll have to draft that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right, but I'm mm -hmm. involved in those discussions, so okay. I'm probably meeting with CBSA in two weeks or so. Okay, John. I'm, I'm wondering if. <laughs> There's this uh, term called the tipping point, and you know it seems to me, and like you have only been here for a few months, so I don't know the history you guys do, but it seems that it's been really very slow, and um, it's obvious to me tonight that there's a potential to really start moving much more rapidly, mm -hmm. um, not just because of the money, but because of the interest. So as soon as you throw it out there and put 450 people say, yeah, I'm interested, and then they're going to talk to their pals and friends and they'll be interested. So we've lit a match. We've not, we haven't lit the fuse. We've lit the match to light the fuse. And so we either, we either have, I think that we should accept this as the tipping point and we should all start thinking about hiring somebody to do that work because there's money right there right away and would give us some some agenda of okay it's really working out okay you know a, an opportunity to start saying we can do this because when i got here nobody seemed to be convinced that this could happen except jeremy and maybe you and so you know, and you. I think the three of you have been convinced. You guys, uh, I'll give you the tripod. There you go. So, so, 
And that's really important. It takes three people to make a business. There's no business that's successful with one or two. So here we are. I think we should start thinking of this as let's, let's accept this. It's going to work. So that's, I guess that's my, my hope right today anyway. Okay. okay. Alan, you're hiding back there. Any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this is feeling like mud season to me. And we're really in the middle of it. We don't see the end of it. I worry that, you know, we did talk about the public safety thing the first year and had fairly long discussions. And I think one of the things we concluded from those discussions was we have to remember our mission. And our mission is to bring fast, high-speed internet to underserved areas, underserved rural areas. And there are any of a number of other things we could do because they would bring revenue to us or because we could get them done fast, but they might not necessarily be helping us get closer to our overall goal. And I worry that if, if we don't get a sharper focus on what we're, what we're committed to doing, we could end up being in mud season for not just months, but years. I mean, we've, we've, now, we've now sort of been spinning our wheels for over a year. And I mean, part of it I'm beginning to realize has to do with the nature of technological change in Vermont. I mean, I, I can't believe how disorganized the state has been for so long on getting this job done. You know, the whole notion of these dark fiber cables lying somewhere out there that we could tap into. And why are they there? Well, because somebody in the legislature thought it would be a good idea to have a line going through Roxbury or Williamstown or something like that. So I think part of it is a problem that, that precedes us and is much more complicated than I know I realized was when I first got into this last year. But I do think that the most important thing we have to do is to just stay focused on the goal of we're trying to get broadband to people who don't have it in rural areas. And that's, that's what I think we should have a laser-like focus on. I hear you, but I'm from Montpelier. And there are representatives from Barrie. And so we do wonder whether providing a service to not underserved areas does, I wonder, whether that does provide a system that facilitates getting it to the rural areas. Because I have studied EC Fiber, and they were able to get started because they had literally millions of dollars of, not donations, but investment. And pursuing rural fiber absent that is very, very, very difficult. And we will learn when we get these feasibility studies, um, but it's not gonna be automatic. So, and I'm not saying that it's a necessary that, that we need to consider the Montpeliers and the Berries, but I, I think it's important to consider it as a possibility so we understand additional revenue streams because, again, I've learned EC fiber is going to be very, very difficult to replicate. Um, we need that boost that they got from million-dollar investors. Um, and it will be interesting when we go to VITA with a $30,000 business plan, whether Vita feels that that's sufficient to provide millions of dollars to CB Fiber. So I, I have two comments and to what Alan was saying. So it's another uh, takeaway from the meeting with ValleyNet. They said providing service to towns that already have service, you lose the people, your supporters, that are in the underserved or unserved. You know, they're like, why are you giving to them? They already have it, you know. So you lose. So that was something that they had experienced. Uh, and uh, the other is that the public safety, there can be some overlap. I, you know, it, it has to be looked at on maps. And where are those, and do they coincide with areas that would want to be served? So... Um, Michael, <clears throat> I kind of want to speak to this comment too, but not about the public safety thing. We are in the mud, 
and we've been in the mud and out of the mud frequently through this process, I agree. Um, one reason we're in the mud is because we're a municipality. And we're a group of 17 towns who have to follow all kinds of special rules because we're a municipality. And we have to organize in very efficient and regimented ways with finance policies and all those things. And we spent a lot of time developing structure and, and debating it and passing it. And, and we only meet once a month. And so that, that took up a lot of time. And it's still going to take up more time. And we can't escape that because that's what we are. Um, I don't think building fiber is difficult. It's costly, but it isn't difficult. It isn't, I'm, I'm not one of the ones who thinks we can't do it. I think we can do it and we will do it. Um, and once we get rolling, it'll be surprising how well it goes. There's gonna be all kinds of crazy setbacks and I know about that too, but it isn't, that hard. Um, it's really getting the funding. And getting the funding isn't going to come from our community. It's going to come from the big guys. And that's why we're going through these processes of, of responding to RFPs and trying to ally with an electric co-op and so forth. All of these things are necessary and it's frustratingly slow, but keep the faith. We're going to get there. John, did you? So, yeah, uh, you know, to beat on, uh, on Alan a little bit and, and agree with him, but <laughs> it comes back to Washington Electric because Washington Electric is serving underserved people. And Green Mountain Power is, is serving, you know, the high density, more or less, the much higher density population, whereas Washington Electric isn't. So, you know, any encouragement that we can give to Barry and the people that he works with, then I think that I think that we should follow up on that. And you know, 41 towns, even if the people are sort of spread out the way they are for Washington Electric, we're providing a service. I thought that's really what we're trying to do here: mm -hmm. make some money so we don't go out of business over a weekend. But um, but at the same time, is to is to get. I mean, I have three meg. I don't know what you guys have, but I have three meg. I I used to have one and a half. So. Um, you know, email is really slow at one and a half. You know, don't don't put any attachments at one and a half. <laughs> you know, it's the um, and the upstream. Jeremy, is worse. can you uh, maybe touch base with the the guy who's the designer and ask him if he'd be willing to come into the next meeting sure. and give us a little presentation about you know his work product, the kinds of things he does. Let us ask him some questions. Figure I don't know, what, 20, 15, 20 minutes. We'll put it on the agenda for him. And then we'll grill him for half an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least. Or until he's done. Um, <laughs> and, and anyway, if that works out, just get in touch with well, like myself or Becca, and just we'll make okay. sure it gets on the agenda. Absolutely. One last word from Dave. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I guess I, I hear this sort of depression. I wouldn't be putting the amount of energy I'm putting into this if I didn't think it was going to be successful. That's what I want to say. <laughs> so. The way things have gone for this whole meeting, we've deferred a lot to the next agenda. And unfortunately, this last item, which is adjournment, we're going to have to defer also. So don't go anywhere. We're just going to sit here and wait till the next meeting. <laughs> 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 and we're adjourned. Do we really want to add another presentation to the next meeting? Oh, yes. I think we may as well be here till 10, you know? Yeah. <laughs>